Hello world, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to CodingScientist.com, a one-of-a-kind unique series on ESP32 Zero to Hero. In this series, I will be covering most aspects of ESP32 module and the ESP32 CAM module and ESP8266, which is the older version of ESP32. So let's let's start with esp32 guys if you are ready with your module in your hand and uh, i would suggest go ahead and procure it uh, esp32 uh, along with uh, breadboard and couple of jumper wires and i am sure most of you from the arduino background might have the breadboard jumper wires and few sensors and leds and stuff like that so this series is going to get really interesting because we are going to build ton loads of projects on iot on robotics and also a very basic level of uh, tiny machine learning using esp32 and esp32 camera module all right guys so let's let's deep dive into what exactly is esp32 with some of the details of sip for example esp32 as i said it's it's one of the most popular and practically used modules for the last couple of years and of course the ESP8266 uh, Wi-Fi module. Now there are various versions of this modules available in the market. So you, you might get confused Th those of you who are first timer getting into the microcontrollers world you might get confused because there are different different varieties of ESP32 32 uh, modules. So do not get confused you just have to look at esp32 development board and this is what it is and this is this is also called if you take a close look at what it is written here it will be mentioned as ai thinker board so it's also called ai thinker board so you you might look for that specific version but however the chip the inbuilt chip in esp32 is the same as it is in across all the version of esp32 so everything works in the same way the ESP32 module is basically an upgraded version of ESP8266, right? So in addition to the Wi-Fi module, this module also has a Bluetooth of version 4, which is fantastic. We can control multiple devices within, uh, you know, using the inbuilt uh, Bluetooth and also the Wi-Fi. So it's going to get pretty interesting, right? And this also has a dual core CPU working in 80 to 240 megahertz frequency. Wow, looks powerful. And also containing two Wi-Fi and Bluetooth modules and various input and output pins. So the ESP32 is also the best choice to use for IoT, robotics and tiny ML. It's going to get really interesting guys, trust me. Now let's take a look at some of the pin configuration, how it looks like. So let me show you the details of the pin. So as you can see right behind me, these are the breakout, these are the pin diagram. These are the out input and output diagram uh, specified for each and every pin. So if you take a close look at it, right? So what, there are about 18 channels of 12 bits analog to digital converter ADC which is which is pretty good if you look at the input and output pins there are about you know 32 the ESP32 chip has about 48 IO pins which is you know fabulous but the module has only access to only 28 pins why is it when we have 48 IO why is it accessible to only 28 pins I will talk about that as we get along, as we get into the MicroPython and C++, I will show you why. The average current consumption is just about 80 milliampere and the maximum current it can take is about 500 milliampere. So we got to be very careful. The voltage for ESP32 is just about 2.2 to 3.6 volt, not beyond that, between 2.2 to 3.6 volt only, all right? Now let this also has I2C and I2S interface, which is to basically to the I2S interface is to connect to audio devices, right? And the I2C interface uh, uh, interface is basically connecting the parallel, uh, uh, you know, I/O uh, uh, inputs. And this also has a memory card inter interface, which is which is pretty good, right? And also a temperature sensor, which is built in. Although the ESP32 
has pretty fewer pins but you know most of that are commonly used processors you won't face any problem with multiplexing multiple functions within the IO pins of ESP32 right if you look at the drawing you can see the number of IO pins guys now most important thing you you need to make a note the voltage level of ESP32 pins is just about 3.3 volt 2.2 to 3.3 volt actually that is the that is that is the best optimized voltage you can give if you want to connect your ESP32 to other devices which operates in 5 volt or above you should probably use a kind of uh, you know the voltage regulator which through which you can distribute the current that is the best way I can show that to you when we get into ESP32 CAM where we will be actually building this kind of rover rover bot right this is the bot which a small little bot with a breadboard I built and it's it's pretty powerful using ESP32 CAM and this is the voltage regulator which I am talking about so I'll come to this later I'll show you systematically how to build and program it and make it work autonomously or controlled way now if you look at the supply pins the module has two pins one is the 5 volt and one is 3.3 power supply pins right so you can use these two pins to supply other devices and modules there is a ground pin the mod this particular ESP32 has about three different ground pins which is very convenient right it's very easy to breadboard or even the PCB uh, circuitry using three different ground pins there is also EN pin which is nothing but enable pin this pin is used to enable and disable the module right it should ideally be high in your code when you write high is equal to that is one right uh, that is to enable the module and uh, you need to define low to disable it so the enable pin and that's that the way it works there is also the GPIO pins now how, how does it work you can use the 32 different GPIO pins to communicate with you know external sensors like LEDs switches and other input output devices even the motors or relays or, or ultrasonic sensors or any other sensors you might want to use that these are the 32 pins we will be using you can pull up or pull down these pins internally I will show it to you in the later stage using a pull up resistor how we can pull it out and pull it in ADC analog to digital converter you can use 16 ADC pins if you look at the drawing just below behind me 16 ADC pins on this module to convert analog voltage which is basically output of some you know any any of the sensors to a digital input some of these converters are you know connected to the internal amplifier and are able to measure small voltages with very high precision which is perfect there is also a DAC digital to analog converter the ESP32 module has two DAC digital to analog converter with eight bits of accuracy and there is also touch pads and there are about what 10 different pins on ESP32 module that are which are basically very sensitive to capacitor changes you know when there is a capacitance, capacitance changes you can connect these pins to some of the pads and the, the pads on the PCB board just an empty pad right and use them as a touch switches you touch that and it will activate so just imagine guys what else you can do right SPI let's talk about serial peripheral interface that is what is called SPI SPI it is basically an interface bus you know commonly used to send data between microcontrollers and small peripheral such as shift registers or sensors or SD cards or any other devices you might connect to your ESP32 it basically uses a separate clock and the data lines along with a select line to choose the device you wish to talk to and there are about two SPI interfaces on this module that you can use it to connect the display the SD card or mic micro SD card memory card or external flash memory or, or anything else you, you might want to use I2C this is the most important thing which we will be using pretty often using ESP32 in most of our projects let it be IoT projects or robotics or any other you know uh, customized uh, uh, projects we might want to build we will be accessing the I2C so the SDA and SCL pins are basically used for I2C communication right the I2C protocol is basically used to establish 
communication between two or more chips you know i'll i'll, I'll talk about that in detail in the upcoming lessons in the future but for now you can just understand the basic concept of i to z you know two different chips means ic's means integrated circuits here hence why it's known as integrated circuit i to c integrate inter integrated circuit that is why it is called i to c right do not get confused inter integrated circuit communication between two chips is called i to c however it should be noted that i to c could also be used as a communication protocol between two ICs that are located on the same PCB. It's not that you put one IC in a different board and another IC in a different board is going to com communicate. No, it has to be in the same PCB board. For example, there are two different chips here internally built, right? So the communication between these two chips is what is ideally called I2C. The two wires or lines are called the serial clock right or SCL basically what is SCL and SDA is it is the two different wires or you can call it as lines are called the serial clock or SCL and the serial data which is SDA right so that that is what the difference between SCL and SDA serial data and serial clock is SCL the SCL line is a clock signal which basically synchronize the data transferred between the device on the I2C bus and it is generated by the master device, right? There's a slave and the master. How it gets generated, that is what we are going to take a look at it. And the other line is the SDA line, which basically carries only the data, right? There is also UART, which is basically a serial communication. Now, there are two UART serial interface in ESP32 module, right? Using these pins, you can transfer information up to 5 megabytes per second between two devices. That is UART0 has also CTS and RTS bases, which I am going to talk about that in detail, right? And UART basically stands for Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter, right? Universal Asynchronous Receiver and Transmitter. You can Google up what is UART. There are ton loads of information start learning that try to build some skills and knowledge it's not a communication protocol like spi or i2c but a physical circuit in a microcontroller or a standalone ic a separate ic which you can call it as a uart uh, you know a transmitter or a receive, receiver a uart's main purpose is to transmit and receive serial data now let's look at the pdm pwm if you look at the drawing how many pwms are there right Almost all of the ESP32 input output pins can be used for PWM, Pulse Width Modulation. PWM stands for Pulse Width Modulation. I am going to start a parallel series focusing only into the electronic components, build some random projects and show you guys each and every component how it works. In that I will be covering about PWM in more detail. We might need some oscilloscopes and stuff like that which I will show it to you and I will test it and show how, how to work around with the PWMs. Using these pins, you can control the motors, LEDs, lights, color and relays and so on, so on and on. So guys, this is just a pretty much high level overview about ESP32 because before we get started deep dive, it's very important you understand about the ESP32 high level overview so that it's easy for us to get deeper and deeper. All right, guys, I'm going to be back soon in the next lesson. Until then, goodbye.